Hey, welcome back. Uh, so my camera, my gear isn't considered, I guess, professional quality. I have a lower end DSLR, which means I have to make up for the fact that it can't do credible low light performance and stuff like that unless you do a long exposure. But what I wanted to show in this video is that if you sacrifice, you can actually come up with some pretty good shots. Now I know in this video, I'm gonna be using a drone, a DJI Mavic Pro, the first gen, but I wanna show you if you get up, say right now we're in daylight savings in New South Wales. I got up at five, got to my car, then I went to Macca's because that's the only place that has coffee at that time. So went to McDonald's, ordered a macchiato, Got this little, little whatever this is. Starbucks, why you do me dirty? I thought a macchiato was that, but no, Macca's is right, it's that. Anyway, so then I got to Bondi at 6.15, found parking. The trip was actually pretty easy, no traffic. So I got there, and I honestly can't say how beautiful it looked at that time. At 6.30 in the morning, there was actually more people and I thought there would be some really, really friendly people, but the lighting is key. You can do so much with good lighting and a good location. What I did is I launched the drone at say about 6.30, and then some amazing people came up to speak to me. Just people, fellow drone pilots, uh, just people working out. They came to just have a chat. It was so, so nice. Except there was a problem. The wind was so severe. Don't know if I got the exact reading of it, but it was really, really strong. Now these batteries I have didn't last me that long. On my phone, it said I had 10 minutes to bring the drone back from where it was. It was right about here and I had to bring it back. Should be enough time, right? Because it was about 800 meters away from me. I start trying to fly it back but it was at an altitude that the wind was affecting it too much, but I didn't realize. Um, this is the closest I've come to losing the drone. I started to pull the trigger for it to come back and the wind was pushing it in the other direction. So then I thought, you know what? Maybe I can land it in the beach. It looks closer to the beach. Let me land it there. I went to push it towards the beach. Nothing, it wasn't responding at all. The more I struggled, the more energy it took for it to try and fight the wind, my time decreased. So in all that time, what was probably about a minute and a half of me panicking, took off four minutes off my 10. So I had about six minutes left. So what I thought was the best thing was drop the drone to probably about a meter off sea level. The reason I did that is because wind is less strong the lower down you go. So I thought, hey, this thing is gonna end up in the water one way or another. So I dropped it down, meanwhile in my head, calculating, thinking, because this is my uncle's drone. So meanwhile in my head, I was thinking, you know what, maybe, I, maybe I'll buy him the second one. I'll buy the Mavic Pro too. I'll buy him the Zoom or something, you know. Maybe he wouldn't even care about this drone. Doesn't matter. I was just thinking about it, thinking any excuse. As I dropped it to the water, it was able to get to about seven kilometers per hour when I told it to come back. So it actually did respond when it was lower. But in all that time, I think I had about two minutes left and 800 meters to go. I started pulling it towards it and it started dropping at a faster rate. So then when it was about, uh, about a minute away, well, sorry, a minute left in battery, I still had about 400 meters. So what I did is I shot it as high as I could because when the drones run out of battery, their propellers just slow down, it starts to come down, but like it glide. It doesn't just drop out of the air. So. I thought if I launch it as high as I can, that will give me the best opportunity to control left to right. Sorry, I don't know if that's pitch your like that stuff, but left to right, but I knew I wouldn't be able to control the height. So I shot it up and it went to 0%, as in dead, nothing. And it just glided down. You can see here, like I'm standing and I'm panicking. In my head, I'm just thinking that's it. I can't do anything. It hit zero, it's still over water. I'm screwed, but I don't know how this thing made it. And that was the first battery. So I ended up getting these shots on the first battery. I think they were really, really cool. You can see that sort of purple and orange light and I know, I really liked it. The second round that I went, the sun was already above the horizon. So I got these types of shots, but I was actually able to get the other side of Bondi. I like the lighting that it was shining onto the cliff that I was in. Throughout this time, actually a really cute thing happened. A um, person that was working out there, there was so many people working out because people are mental. But 
everyone there was so happy, so supportive of me. Like they, they'd come over and just be like, oh, did you, have, did you get a good shot? Like, I, oh, it looks so good. Have you seen any whales? Like people, people were really, really nice and their dogs were even nicer. So during this uh, third round, a puppy sat on my foot while I was piloting a drone, it was really cute, a pit bull uh, and the owner stopped by for a nice chat, it was really good but I was able to get these shots now if you see, there's this pool in this shot, I love this one now usually uh, that pool is filled but I, I think they recently renovated throughout the whole Covid break so they redid that, it hasn't been filled again but this shot is beautiful, I also got this shot of the surfers I mean, come on, like the surfers, the waves crashing I love that shot. That was actually one of Sarah's favorites. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to get heaps of these other shots that the lighting was just perfect. So right at sunrise, it isn't always, I guess, the best. I'm not saying that you go right at sunrise because the lighting is hard to work with. Again, if you have a beginner camera, it probably, this isn't the best conditions for it. But right as the sun has just come up, it, like it's already cleared the horizon so for me that was about 7 15 7 20 you get these types of shots the lighting is so evenly spread it lights up everything correctly you can see through the water everything is exposed as it should be now these are the conditions that if you don't have a good camera like i do technically this is the condition you should go and shoot in so about 7 30 8 o'clock Yes, that means you have to get up, but I got the best advice given to me years ago that I wish I would have listened to. The job that you're meant to do is the job that you are willing to get up at 5 a.m. for. And for me, I know that that's videos and photography. I will get up and do those shots, take these videos to show you if you just get up that bit earlier or you sacrifice your time just a little bit, doesn't matter if you have bad equipment, it doesn't matter if you have a low-end DSLR, you can get amazing shots. You don't need a drone. I took this shot with my DSLR, the one I'm filming on right now, and you can see that the lighting is just perfect. So please, give it a shot. A lot of photographers say you don't need a good camera or a good location, but if you need that self-confidence and you need just to take a photo to look at and be like, wow, I made something great, please do it. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Daniela for Lux Media and I'll see you on the next one.